I want to welcome all of you guys and tell you kind of how this topic started. We are recording it, so hopefully we'll get some additional viewers as we go. But, you know, it's always been a thing as an as a athlete, a parent of athletes, a daughter of a football player. My mother played sports. My husband played sports. I mean, we're just, this is what we do, right, is the phrase, get stronger, faster, smarter, work harder, all of those things. But what does it really look like? And so we were discussing it last week and then went out to our, our uh, resident experts and we said, you know, what does it look like? What, what does it take? And so many student athletes, you know, they're worried about getting their grades, getting their high school awards right now, doing all the things they do, but they're not really focusing on what they need to do to be prepared athletically in college. So again, I'm the owner of CSA, Collegiate Sports Advocate, Sherry Nadine. I'm going to pass the mic and let Dr. Jackie introduce herself. Oh man, thank you so, so much. Yeah, it, today was an awesome day for sure. It's always fun celebrating something that you work very, very hard for. And I hope that this is just an actual, an actual stepping stone for you in this space uh, to propel you to uh, obtain your dreams uh, and whatever that is uh, athletically. Um, but yes, I'm from New Jersey. I, uh, I am a former D2 two-sport athlete in soccer and lacrosse. Um, so I do know, you know, athletically in two areas, um, how to prepare, um, but I know times have changed. So I'm here to, to help you through that and be a little bit of a voice from that area. Fantastic. And if you notice, uh, those of us who've been on this space before, we throw a lot of little love and claps and, and uh, comments. And that, that's by just uh, clicking on the little heart with the plus down there in the bottom right. And if you want to uh, ask a question, if you want to be a speaker, if you want to contribute, you can either hit me up on the private DM. I'm Collegiate Sports Advocate up there in the top left. Or you can also put it up here on the space or you can message Jackie. So I am so excited to announce these two speakers tonight. And we're going to go as usual. I'm going to have them each introduce their uh, background. And then I'm going to throw some questions out. So if you guys are wanting to hear some topics tonight, go ahead and put them up in the space or on our private message. And the first one I'm going to introduce is Sergio. And I am here in the DFW area and I've heard a ton about Sergio and always send my student athletes that are wanting to take their game to the next level to him. So Sergio, welcome. Please tell us all about your background, your education, and uh, uh, just tell us more about you. Awesome. Hey, Sherry, can you hear me okay? Yes, awesome. Sir. Perfect. Yeah, so my name is Sergio. I grew up in the Dallas area. I grew up uh, running track, the two and the 400 meter. Um, went on to run at the D1 level, played baseball. Uh, besides that, uh, my background, I'm actually a mechanical engineer. So I focus my training. Uh, this is my eighth year training, elite athletes. I really focus my training on the biomechanics and the physics. So hope to bring something a tad different to the table. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited to be here and uh, hope I can contribute in a positive manner. Fantastic. And Dion is not only a dear friend of mine, but a soul sister here. She's also a fellow coach and then joined CSA working with me after us doing business together for quite some time. So Dion, love to hear all about you. Hi, Sherry, uh, and everyone else that's on Twitter. Thank you for having me this evening. Jackie, congratulations. Sergio, I'm excited to be on here with you. Um, you know, this is a long journey. I think that uh, you hit it you know, hammer on the nail or the nail comes before the hammer or however you want to put it. We always want to get stronger, faster, um, and just understand like what the true formula is to a great athlete. And so, um, my background, I've been training for about maybe 13 plus years now. I was a, uh, junior college. Um, so I played at the junior college level. Um, and then I went and I went on and continued my education and my softball career at a division two school. And so uh, I had the luxury of playing at two different levels of play um, in the softball world. Very blessed um, to be able to work with some high end athletes and um, really just understanding my degree is a kinesiology exercise science degree. Uh, really looking at the movement. So definitely love the fact that Sergio's on here on a biomechanics um, eye on the movement and then also 
looking at the whole picture of the athlete and where we are now versus where we want to be. And, um, and so happy to be on this call. And I'm so excited to dive into this conversation with you all. Exciting. So I am going to go right back to you, Dion. So stay tuned here and then we'll go to Sergio. What does it look like for a softball player to be quote unquote ready for college? Go ahead, Dion. Absolutely. So quote unquote ready athlete coming in, they're coming in in August and I think there's a lot of nerves. Um, So it's mentally prepared Uh, time management, understanding where their body is at the moment and what they can contribute to the game. Um, In the off season, we have to understand that we are going to play in off season. However, it's going to be very strategic. Um, I know there's a lot of junior colleges and AI, um, the whole list, but really looking at the body and understanding their body, understanding that sleep is very important. I know when you get to college, um, sometimes we lose sleep for various reasons. And sleep is so important to the body on top of hydration. Um, I would love to say that you could hit the weight room, but you've already done that if you are a, a collegiate athlete. If you are signed, ready to go, you've been lifting and running and conditioning your body for years on end before you actually got there. And so I would hope to say that everything has been taken care of on the back end, our cardio, um, making sure that we can run at a high endurance level for long periods of time. Um, our strength and conditioning coaches and the coaches that are um, certified to, to realm just lift in the, the weight room with their athletes. Um, they're going to test and measure the athletes and understand where they're at. And I feel like if the athlete comes in ready to go, um, then they're going to be fine. Um, moving forward. So a lot of cardio, I'd say run, 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 uh, short distance, long distance, um, uh, definitely have already hit the weight room, understanding the fundamentals, fundamentals are sharpened. Um, and then they're going to be sharpened again when you get there. So do not worry. Um, you guys are going to work so hard in the fall. And I feel like all of the work in the fall definitely shows up in the spring. And so, um, a little bit about how they can be ready. Um, moving forward. Excellent. And Sergio would love to have your take on this. Yeah, no, absolutely. I definitely agree with a lot of things that were said as far as the, uh, the time management part. I love that because I see so many kids at the high school level that they depend a lot on the parents as far as scheduling their workouts, scheduling their meals. I mean, everything. So I uh, really do love the time management part of it. If I can add to that, I think something that is is very important to understand is what does the program that you're going into, what do they expect? What are their tests? Do they have a gas or test? Do they have a strength test? Um, that's where I feel a lot of the athletes that I uh, train, once they get to that level, they understand what to expect, right? They understand, okay, do they do a lot of uh, cross training? Um, uh, do they do CrossFit uh, type of things? Do they do a lot of sprints? Do they... Uh, run polls, so on and so forth. So I think understanding what that program um, expects out of each athlete. Uh, Sometimes JUCOs are a little bit harder because they don't have the same regulations. I know my son played at the JUCO level and some of his practices were 13 hours long, right? They didn't have the regulation that the D1s have. So um, I think understanding what's expected of them, what's expected of the program. And this is a perfect time to start exploring on um, exactly how to fuel your body, right? So uh, so many times we lift weights, we work out, we take swings, but we go eat fried chicken. We'll go to to put stuff in our bodies that are, are causing inflammation, and we can get that a little bit more into later. But understanding how your body works, um, and, and how to fuel it to get ready for that. We don't wait to, to it's, it's game time to start eating and hydrating. We want to start that and creating that habit, if you will. So I think those are the, the couple of things that I would like to add. Sounds great. And you you made me think and go off topic a little bit, but are you seeing that there are different requirements in softball specifically or are you seeing that there are some standards that, you know, when you're the trainer and they're not allowed to get that workout plan until they're already signed, how do you prepare the sophomores and juniors for that experience? 
Right. So that's a really good question. For me, I start with, I don't coach a lot of junior high kids just because of my mechanical background. Sometimes it doesn't really click with them, but uh, uh, getting your body as functional as possible. I talk about functional strength, right? Is that, <clears throat> is that perfect balance of not being too strong, but not being too flexible, being able to be strong enough to play the game and being flexible enough to have the range of motion, to throw the ball with good mechanics, to hit with good mechanics. So getting your body as balanced, even though we're not symmetrically as humans, but getting our bodies as balanced and as athletic as possible prepares you to handle a lot of different things that come your way. Then you can adapt a little bit more if they do a lot of more long distance running, or you can adapt a little bit more. If you go to, uh, you know, Stephen F. Austin in East Texas, they have a huge, huge hill that coaches love running the kids that maybe takes someone that lifts a little bit heavier in squats and deadlifts because that takes a little bit more of the muscle. So, um, if I can answer, I guess that question is keeping your body as balanced and as functional, as, as athletic as possible, really contributes to different formats. Fantastic. And Dion, would you like to add to that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if, if we're being honest, um, sometimes we get a lot of our content. Um, it's actually given to us. And so sometimes you can actually see what they're doing based off of their social media. Um so we'll hit the highlights. Sometimes we'll see that they're doing a, I, I think it's an ROTC, um, you know, uh, obstacle or like, I know um, Stephen F. Austin used to do that. We actually swam. So when we could not be outside and it was freezing in the West Texas area, we were in a pool and that was one way that we could, you know, swim for hours on end and still get our cardio in. And our, I think our pitchers loved it the most. Um, but you know, we were able to swim. That was one of the things you can actually talk and contact other athletes and see, you know, the style of lift that they use, whether it be Olympian lift or whether more a CrossFit or if they're a cross train. And so there are certain things that you can actually find out moving forward, uh, leading up to that point. Now, when you're signed, I'm sure that they'll be happy to give you all kinds of information. And I think that is very valuable. And you run with that. You get with your trainer and you run with that information because you want to be as prepared as possible. Um, but if you are um, kind of in the mystery or if you kind of want to know more about what they do, you know, you can always check that social media. You can ask questions. Um, sometimes those are good questions to ask for, and, and please understand if you are not in the age group or the year that they can talk to you, don't get your feelings hurt if they cannot speak to you directly. Um, but I feel like that, you know, you can find out a lot of information based off of a program of what, what their social media looks like and also what the athletes are talking about. And so, you know, do the due diligence. Um, if you are not a swimmer, Hey, I'm sorry, but that that's being uncomfortable especially when we're getting ready to go to college is one of the things that we are going to have to endure and like, we have to like being uncomfortable and we have to like doing the things that we don't want to do. Um, especially, you know, that nutrition, uh, Serge, you, you know, you were talking about that chicken. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. you know, I may not like vegetables, but what are you going to tell me <laughs> if I was your athlete, right? Yes, ma'am. No, that's right. Um, just to add to that, I completely agree. Once once you've identified your school, then that's that's definitely a lot easier. I guess my um, response was a little bit more geared towards that that ninth grader or that tenth grader who uh, she may have her top five schools or top twenty schools, and there's different programs, right? So it's 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 unfortunately we don't get to play where we dream of. We get to play where where our talents, our our degrees. Uh, and our skills levels are needed for our, the class that we're in. Gosh, you sound like a CSA rep right here, uh, Sergio, because that's all the <laughs> stuff we say all the time. You oh, know, that's you awesome. You don't necessarily get to play where you want to play. You play where you can play. And yeah, that's yeah. why we bring some of this. So let's get a little gritty. What you know, If you had a brand new freshman or sophomore, and is that too late? I mean, should you be bringing 7th and 8th graders in? Or your ideal client is a ninth or 10th grader, and then where do you start? What if you have no idea? What if they have no idea what their talent layer is or where they're going to go? How do you get going? 
Uh, sorry, go ahead, Sergio. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yes. Uh, so for me, it's it's um, uh, talk to coaches, um, go to camps, and sometimes even review uh, the school that y- you think. Yeah, you I fit don't. In. I don't mean from a recruiting perspective. I mean oh, from sorry. a physical. Yeah, from a physical. Oh, from perspective, a physical. I'm like sorry. Have, yes. A brand new athlete walks in, and you're you're going, hey, forget it. You know they want to get recruited, but what do I do with them athletically to get them prepared because oh, they don't know where they're going to be perfect. yet? Yep, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got you now. Got it. Okay, yeah. So the first thing, and I think every trainer that uh, that every athlete goes to, I think it's important for parents to really, really emphasize this. Every trainer should be doing an evaluation of where the athletic body is day one. What imbalances does this athlete have? So I think the first step is to evaluate where the athletic body is with that brand new athlete and start addressing them one by one. That old, that old saying, we're only as, as, as strong as our biggest weakness is definitely true, right? I get athletes all the time to where they look amazing. They could you know, deadlift 200 pounds. And if you ask them to stand on one leg, their ankle just crumbles. Um, so uh, my answer would be is... is Evaluate where the athletic body is and start addressing the small muscle groups to to really start understanding what kind of upside you have. Uh, for me, starting at seventh, eighth grade with a lot of body weight stuff, band stuff, it's it's very important. Uh, doing push ups with correct forms, uh, doing chin ups, pull ups, all of that stuff is is things that you can get started. And those are all step ones to building a great foundation. At the end of the day, a great athlete has a great foundation, and it starts with that day one. Excellent. Deanne, do you want to add on to that? Oops, I got Deanne on mute still. Deanne, are you able to come up? All right. Well, while she's trying to get off mute, sometimes that happens, and sometimes you have to hang up and log back in. I know it's happened to me before. Uh, Usually I get a call waiting in the middle of my uh, Zooms, and that's reminding me to do not disturb right now. So, Dion, whenever you can come back on, just go ahead and come on. Uh, but I'm going to ask the next question because this is something my student athletes, my own children learned because we weren't necessarily focused on the right nutrition. We were always in a hurry, always you know, trying to get to the ballpark and, and doing the best we could to, to get whatever we needed to get. Uh, in their bodies at the time, but it wasn't necessarily nutrition focused. Um, do you want to start, uh, Sergio, on nutrition? Yes, ma'am, absolutely. It's it's. I think that's definitely one of the most underrated uh, things that we do as parents. Because to your point, uh, my son and, and and my daughter, they both uh, played club uh, travel ball, so it was always water burger on and on and on, but. Uh, knowing what we know now is uh, prepackaging your lunches for the field is huge, especially during those summer days, right? Because it's hot and now you're just putting French fries and fried food in your body. So um, I actually spoke to Adione earlier and she made a great analogy. So I'm not going to steal her thunder. I'm going to let her say it, but I 100% agreed with her. The way you fuel your body is the way you're going to perform. And furthermore, um, it really reduces chances of injury because bad foods causes inflammation. Inflammation reduces the timeline of recovery, which means you're asking your body to perform in a um, non-performance stage. And those really is, is where you either don't perform at a high level or you get injured. And we see it all the time whenever we have three, four, or even five games by that fifth game, this is, These young ladies are just absolutely exhausted with the right nutrition, vegetables, uh, good fats, avocados, things of that nature. That leaves that fifth game and you still should be firing. So I think nutrition is almost as important as, as, I'm going to hurt some feelings here, as hitting lessons. Dan, I know that you're passionate about this. Why don't you go ahead and, and add to it? Yeah. I'm sorry, uh, Sergio. You are um, you are on point tonight. I, I can't. Um, you're right. I mean, the nutrition is is a hundred percent key. Um, as as a 
as as a person of of interest as, as far as nutrition is concerned is concerned i will tell you um we use the analogy in my home a lot i have a 13 year old and a 9 year old and if if um you know any of the 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 ladies that have played and they're in their 18 18 new year they know that you you're up to possibly play anywhere between 4 to 8 games in one day and so when we look into our cooler and my daughter goes to grab something and generally in our cooler, you know, we have some, some treats, but then we also have what's going to be fuel. And I always ask her, I say, are you going to perform like a race car? She, she runs, you know, competitively fast. And I say, are you going to perform like a race car or are you going to be a minivan? And so nothing against the minivan. Cause you know, moms with minivans, they move really quickly. Um, but you know, we always talk about, are you going to fuel your body? And what does it look like to fuel your body? So as a as an athlete moving into the dorms, um, I'm going to touch base on this really quickly because this is the probably the hardest transition that um, a student athlete, especially with a meal card or you know an allowance um, in the calf or even in the um, you know they have a restaurant setting, um, this is probably one of the hardest adjustments. You know your timeline in the fall is so critical um, because, and you'll see a lot of injuries moving forward um, in the fall. And hopefully it's not any of our athletes um, and we don't want injury, but sometimes, you know, you will see this and a lot of it has to do with sleep uh, deprivation and it has to do with nutrition. Um, And so, you know, starting your nutritional um, journey, I would say now, you know, you just got, you're graduating, you're going to have a big party. Um, but starting now, I think it's really important for you to understand that if you start now, it'll be easy for you in August. Um, what does that look like? You know, waking up early in the morning, more than likely you're going to have five o'clock weights, five thirty weights. Um, if you are not, um, if you're not waking up in the morning, you know, and you decide to wake up in August at five o'clock in the morning, your sleep pattern is going to be thrown off. On top of that, you have class, then you have labs, and then your mind is going to go crazy. And so in between that, you have to find ways to fuel your body. So meal prep is very important. Um, I would tell, you know, the athlete to kind of put together a mock um, day of what that actually looks like in the fall. If you don't know what a mock day looks like in the fall for an athlete in the off season, um, which, and you do have a fall season, most, most of them do have a fall season. Um, you need to ask and somebody that's actually been there. Um, what does this look like? What do I need to eat? If you are walking into my gym at 6 AM in the morning and you have not fueled your body at least 30 minutes beforehand, you probably will not be successful in the gym with me um, because we are going to go through some rigorous workouts. Um, And so this is something that I feel is so important for the body. Um, Test yourself, you know, months in advance. Find the foods that you love. Um, Find the foods that you maybe do not like but should like them and then move on from there. Um, I feel like this is something that is 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 very overlooked um, and not taken seriously when you move into your dorm. I love it. And, you know, they call it the freshman 15. We won't even tell you how much my freshman year was, but just being funny. But what I like about what you guys are talking about, you're bringing in some key words that are all about what we do from a CSA perspective, time management, communication, accountability. When you start setting up your weekly calendar and food prep, and preparing for your workouts, and preparing your groceries. We actually take our student athletes through a time management training where they utilize 168 hours in the week, and it even includes putting their chores, and putting in their food prep, and the the things they need to do in order to get to the outcome. If you start these things now where you have a cushion with mom and dad to protect you if something goes wrong, when you get to college, you're well prepared to handle the next step, and I have yet to hear a college a student athlete, and we've got 170 of them in college playing right now. Well, maybe after today, some are in the portal, but no, uh, I'm funny today. Uh, but uh, that that they were making it and that they, they were there prepared 100% and it wasn't a break. So when we text them in fall and we say, how's it going? What are you doing? 
the first one ever that came from a power pipe, she said, my legs are noodles. Like I thought I was in the best shape ever and I am blown away. So I'm going to flip that into Sergio. Can you give for, cause I can see our student athletes they are from all over New Jersey and Oklahoma and all, all the way around the country here. Can you give some basic um, steps of if they had to do it on their own and they didn't have a trainer like you and Dion in their area, you know, what would be some basic things that they could do to set up a plan to be successful when they get there? As far as get there, once they get to college? Ready, kind of, yeah, ready athletically to, to be there and to, to handle the next step. Got it. Okay. Uh, that's kind of a broad question, but if I had just to just to kind of generalize, if you will, um, I probably what I see the most underdeveloped in a lot of these kids is, is the core muscle. And a lot of people think, well, I have a six pack. It doesn't really matter. Um, so I would say training uh, the core is, is, is extremely important. That includes the low back, uh, the hip flexors, not just the hips, um, the ankles, the knees, uh, things that connect. Uh, I think those things are very, very important. So doing things like um, uh, uh, dead bugs, uh, you can go to YouTube and, and really get some good cues on that. Uh, uh, dead bugs, uh, supermans, uh, things of that nature, I think, are, are very, very good to, to at least what I call, since I'm a mechanical geek, it's, it's connecting the dots, I think, is key. Once you connect the dots with your body, then you're able to do a lot of other things. Fantastic. Dion, I know you're going to love this one, so keep keep going on. Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I have to definitely 100%. I was giving a bunch of 100% to Sergio on this one, but um, I will tell you, you know, the, the, the levers of the body generally connect to the larger components of the body. So hips, core, lower back. Um, you know, the shoulder cuff is, is, you know, there's so many muscles that go into the shoulder. Um, T's wise and I's laying down. Um, if you haven't tried those yet, go ahead, face down. You're going to contract your whole body toes into the floor. You're going to get into the T position. Try to lift your arms up holding. I would say if you really want to challenge yourself, get a three pound or a four pound. Um, the kids that go through the arm program in our, in our facility, um, the ones that have been training with me for a while, they're up to five pounds, some eight. And it really just depends on the mobility, um, the strengthening, you know, and, and the amount of times that you do these things. So, you know, Sergio is talking about the core movement. Um, you think about that is holding you up. You're using that every single day. The way that we sit in a chair um, while we're in class, or even when we're sitting in the car, um, you know, I always, my daughter wants to be tall and she, she's already passed me. It's not hard. Um, but you know, I always tell her, Hey, you're losing inches, sit up straight, you know, spinal support. Um, and so these are things that y you can do at home. Those supermans are very key. Alternating supermans, um, are amazing, um, hit thrusters from the floor, you know, um, booty bands. Now everybody loves to have a strong, um, gluteus maximus, but I, I would tell you, um, if you don't have quads to go along with those hamstrings, all the connecting, um, we don't really have very much. And so, you know, really understand, um, you know, the floor exercises, you can do very so much without weight. And then when you get your hands on some weight, then you can do even more. Um, and I think that's that's the best part that I can tell you right now, Sergio. You hit it with with um, the core stability, um, understanding your body. Um, on top of that, you know, looking at your form. If you can find a mirror, which ladies, I know we can find a mirror. Gentlemen, I know you know where a mirror is at. Um, if you can find a mirror and and look at the way that our body is moving and being familiar with our own body and the way that we move and our breathing patterns, especially when you're going down into a squat um, for that pelvic floor, you want to be able to hold, you know, that in and tighten the lower abdomen so that way you can hold it in place and lock yourself in so that you can get into that deep squat and then propel yourself back up with control. Um, I can't tell you how many times I have an athlete come in and I'm like, all right, well, let me see your squat. And, you know, knees are in and they're bent forward and then they fall forward. And I'm like, okay, 
let's try to find some heels and now we're going to go barefoot. And so, um, you know, these are things that can prevent you from injury um, and can really, really help you moving forward. And to be honest with you, everything that we just spoke on as far as, you know, T's, Y's and I's on the floor, Jane Fonda's, um, you know, glute bridges, you can do those three to four times a day. And a lot of the times I will tell my kids, hey, if you have time to Netflix and watch TV, you can lay on the floor and do some work. Fantastic. And I'm going to throw it back at you. I'd love to hear from each of you, but I'll start with Dion. Uh, Talk about some successes you've had. You know, a kid walks in and what did you do with them and how far did you get them? And or failures, people that come, don't do the work and don't succeed uh, on their journey. Absolutely. Uh, I had... Um, I have some athletes that, um, without naming any names, they are, um, actually graduating and, um, they were in a lot of pain and, um, we couldn't figure out, you know, and, and we're looking at, you know, the throw pattern and we're looking at different arm slots that they use in position, um, that they're in and, and, and why they would use, you know, this deliveries and, um, you know, their arm shoulder bicep was just always in pain. And so we were able to bring them back to um, throwing at a high velocity out exit output um, with no pain. Um, when I have an athlete that's in pain, you know, we always want to ask why. Why are we in pain? Um, because you should not be able, you should not live with pain. I don't feel like you, anybody should be in pain. Our body is made to heal itself. Our body is made um, to recover and help it recover. And so, um, you know, I helped her recover and she's actually going to, con- so she's graduating, but she's going to continue playing. And I'm very proud about that. Um, I, I do have a failure to speak on. Um, and, and this kid was phenomenal. She was just phenomenal. And um, I, I really, really am for a lot of surgery, but then I'm also, let's try to try to, to use all resources before we go under the knife, especially at a young age. And, um, this, you know, this athlete decided that they did not want to do any rehab, um, to, to strengthen around the body. Um, so she ended up quitting sports altogether and, um, everything that I had explained to her through, you know, medical background and research. And I even handed over the research that was, um, that was given to me. And we studied under, um, you know, medical professionals actually chimed in on conversations with this athlete and they ended up quitting, um, all together. And, and it was very, it was very disappointing because she was so talented and, um, at the end of the day, and she was honest and, and I praise her for being honest, but she did not want to do the work. Um, and she had, and she was honest with me. She, and it was really sad. She didn't, she didn't want to do the work, you know, coach Hill. I just don't want to do that. Well, and, and I was kind of dumbfounded because we spent so much time and effort and, um, it just came down to, she didn't want to push through the rehab portion of it to try to get stronger, to be stronger than what she was, um, before her injury. And, um, unfortunately that athlete, she she doesn't perform anywhere on an athletic platform. Gotcha. Hey Sergio, what do you what are your thoughts? Any success and any uh, failure stories? Uh, yes, I have. A, I guess a couple that I would like to share. One of them was a a uh, six foot two fourteen year old kid that was just super lanky and and she came out and she she's a volleyball player, so she wanted to jump higher. She wanted she wanted pretty much her vertical, right, to, to, to go up. Um, as a track sprinter, we always uh, preach that the higher you can jump, the faster you can run, which holds true for softball as well. Um, she put in work. She came to me three to four times a week, stayed consistent, stayed disciplined, watched her diet. Uh, she just committed to LSU. So I'm not going to say names, but – I'm going to brag about the school that she committed. And then I have um, another girl that she was already committed to a really power five school. And she already came to me committed. 
but she knew she wanted to get better. I was real inspired by her because a lot of kids, once they commit, they shut it off. Uh, so I like to share those two stories because one of them, she committed to, to get in out of her comfort zone uh, and really, really put it into work, both nutrition, work, classroom, obviously. Uh, her social life uh, was third or fourth on the list. And so whenever this school offered her a full ride, that was great. And then the second one was already a huge commit, but she knew she had to get better. Uh, it's, it's, it's really admirable whenever you can actually um, coach a kid that way. As far as failures, I unfortunately have had one or two. They're all in the same correlation, though. They all have one thing in common. The parent wants it more than the kid. So what I've done to really counter that, and Jackie, did you have a question? I think I see your hand up. Oh, no, it's just for whenever you're done. I just so Sherry knows that I got something in there. Okay, perfect. Awesome. So um, one thing that I've done uh, probably over the last two years or so is I really like to create a, a good, healthy coach-athlete relationship, and I really like to communicate with a kid. Uh, I find that that failure rate goes way down whenever you have that. Now, <clears throat> I mainly coach females because softball and volleyball are the two sports that I coach. So I like the parents in the te- uh, I like the parents in the text thread, but I don't like to hear from the parents. I want to hear from the kids. And what I found over the years that failure rate does go way down. And it also prepares the child to be able to speak to coaches because there's nothing worse than having a very athletic kid that is awkward to run a coach whenever that junior year comes. It's a big turnoff. A hundred percent. And Jackie would love to hear what you got. Yeah. You know, I always come back as oddly to myself and I mentioned it last space uh, in regards to breaking my back within like the first two weeks um, actually of being on campus and and being in preseason. And I always say, and and it was a different era. We were, you know, there speed and agility was just starting to become permanent essentially in all schools up here. Um, And in some areas are still not, it's still not a part of the culture, but um I always say I, I thought that I was just at one point I was like I'm good where I'm at like I feel good I think that like it's not necessary why do more and some coaches were like you got to get ready you got to get ready and I had examples like there was one girl who went to um, a Big East school uh, back in the day and you know was essentially thrown against the fence in soccer and broke ribs and all that and I was ignorant because at a certain level you become you know you feel empowered by your play and you're doing well um, and I, and my biggest thing would be to any athlete, um, especially female athletes, is don't settle that you're playing well and you're fine and that's going to bring you to the next level and you're going to stay healthy. I mentioned in another space prior that injury is part of collegiate sports. I mean, you're going to be ailing, whether it's actual physical, you know, you know, a sprain or break, hopefully never. Um, right. But whether, you know, shin splints or something else or just, you know, overuse, it, you're going to be really using your body so the better you can have your foundation, right? The better it lasts. And so if you want to play and you want to keep your position and not consistently be battling just based off of coming back from injury, like you should be setting your body up now. It is your toolkit. Um, And I wish, you know, I had taken that more seriously because man, um, it was tough. It was a tough comeback within two weeks. You had this dream preseason and then I should have done what they told me to do. Um, and so um, highly, highly suggest it's, and, and everything that you were saying, Sergio, with regarding like the core, it, we do not realize as female athletes how important your core is. Um, and so I'm um, highly suggesting that as well. Fantastic. And Jackie always likes to tie everything back in together. And it's great because her experience has been fabulous. And I think I heard you say something that uh, I get very kind of bothered by because once they commit, they do kind of check out. They check out on uh, the support systems. They check out on their travel teams. They sometimes change teams and go to lesser teams so they don't have to travel so much, saving money. And they kind of feel like, hey, I got it. I made it. And then they get there and then they don't make it. And I would tell you, I have more stories of that happening than uh, not doing you know, enough work, but just checking out and thinking, hey, I got it made or not doing enough. And then they get their senior packet and they're like, oh, no, I'm just going to take it to my trainer and I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And man, it's very specific. I think it was a 62 page document 
that one of our P5 softball players got, and it, it blew her away. I know on the soccer side, Jackie would experience this too. My daughter had to do a beep test. And if you haven't seen the beep test, go YouTube that one and see if you can get through that. It's a softball player. If you can get through a beep test, you're going to be in great cardio shape. And one of the reasons we brought this on tonight is every year when we get out to our first tournament, right after the College World Series, almost all of us are in this heavy heat areas. The cardio will kick your you-know-what. You get out there, you can't even get through a, a game without absolute exhaustion. I know my own son had not a dehydration issue. He got leg cramps from lack of minerals because he was sweating out so much liquid. So you've really got to balance the hydration with the proper mineral intake, which is some of your melons and fruits. And you got to do this several days in advance. And Dion, I'd love to see you add on to this. Yes. Um, you know, to, to highlight that part, um, a lot of girls will show up and, um, unfortunately, like I said, you can't show up to your dorm, you know, hit the grocery store and then think that we're going to be able to, um, eat healthy or try to, uh, put together this amazing meal plan in your dorm with no kitchen. Um, (laughs) so, so just, you know, bear with me for the ones that are freshman year and, and you're looking at this sink like, wow, how am I supposed to put together, you know, this top chef meal? Um, but a, a lot of a lot of what you're saying right now in that 100 degree heat and then going off to different um, demographics, you know, you have to be able to prepare more than that week. Um, you should be preparing at least months in advance. Um and, and this is something that I, I can't stress to you enough over the summer. We, you know, and if you have made it and I mean, you're committed and you have a place to go in, in August, you already know what it takes to get through 115 degree heat um, or 95. If you, you know, if you are in um, Laguna Niguel, <laughs> California, um, you know, with that ocean breeze, but you, you have to understand that you are going to be competing as if you were playing about maybe four games in a day every day for about five days throughout that week and maybe get one day off, maybe. Um, and that's probably called study hall. So, so you, you have to understand, you know, you're going to go from weights to class, back to your dorm, you know, sometimes you're not even going to have time to take a shower. I know it sounds disgusting, but you just will not probably have time. If you are clear across campus and you have to hit your first class, then you're going to go to practice. And after practice, you're probably going to go do something else. And then you're going to have study hall. And then you will hit your dorm probably around maybe eight or nine o'clock at night again. Um, And so you're preparing yourself as if you have a mini cooler with you, you pack a lunch, you should have a cooler in your backpack or your bag. Um, you're preparing and you should know how to do this months in advance and know how to keep your food fresh so that you will want to eat it because that is also very important too. Um, also too, let's touch base on the friends thing. Um, if you have some, you know, some outer influence that is not on board with your nutrition um, or your goals really, then they're not truly your friends. And a lot of times, you know, they'll be wanting to go, um, you know, to get, Hey, let's, let's just go with that fried chicken, right? They're wanting to go and they're going to smother it down with some gravy and don't get me wrong. I love fried chicken and greens and all kinds of stuff, even though I'm a California kid, um, you know, they're going to want to go out and eat, or we're going to go and we're going to hit, you know, some heavy ice cream on top of a bunch of soda. And then we're going to drink Red Bulls all night. Cause we're going to do Netflix all night and we're going to stay up all night. And if they're wanting to you to do this and partake in this and they don't care about you meeting with your trainer at six o'clock in the morning, they are truly not your friends. And that is something to, you know, to, to really digest. But at the end of the day, you're going to be doing this for the next four years. And if you have friends that are not supportive of you, um, in your training goals, in your academic goals, in your athletic goals, um, you know, in, in good mental space, you know, they're, if they're making fun of you, that's probably not the best thing for you. Um, because you're going to go off and you're going to, you're going to be able to be challenged with all kinds of other things. And that's the last thing you need. And so, um, you know, that I, I kind of go off on that, but it's very important, especially when you're in those last few months of, 
high school and you're celebrating and you're doing the things that you want to do before you go off. Um, if they are supportive of you, they'll love you and they'll support you no matter what. And I will add, because a lot of our audience here today is in the recruiting process and not committed yet, that these are great things that you can translate into what you're going to be doing this summer. You're going to be going six to eight weeks on the road. And many of you are on the same teams. You know, I, I've gone through strict diets before and you can actually find good health food if you seek it out. There's Whole Foods in town. You all know me. I go through Panera. And there's places that you can find that you can know that you're going to get a good, clean meal and you can have a healthy meal. And then there's always the grocery stores and just go in and get, you know, pre-cut uh, fruits and vegetables and put a cooler. And I'm just suggesting to be proactive about that from week to week because you also save money instead of going to the restaurants. And it's very difficult to serve, you know, large groups of people. So take care of yourself hydrate less and my husband works for coca-cola so less uh sodas and more dasani or uh, i forget the other uh, water that they rep but uh you know buy the good waters stay away from the sugars only go to the sports drinks when you have to recover it's not something you drink at 10 o'clock in the morning after your first game any of the sugars are going to crash and burn they're actually negative um, image or messaging to your body. So I would add that. And while we're wrapping up a little bit, if any of you guys have questions out there, because we definitely have an awesome audience, more than we thought we were going to get tonight since I couldn't get the original link to work. But uh, if you've got any questions that we didn't answer or if you wanted something different before our two fabulous speakers check out for the night, uh, you're welcome to do that. But I wanted to bring this together with these types of um, experts because it's so important for you guys to have a successful summer and be successful athletes in your recruiting process. When the coaches are coming out, they're looking for a good, well-rounded athlete. They're not looking for the girl with the chips and salsa and the liquid cheese. I don't know what's going on with Texas, but that liquid cheese is too much for me. And with the jalapenos on it in the snack line, they're not looking for that kid. They're looking for that kid that's, you know, taking care of their body, their mind. They're um, making sure that they're doing proper stretches. They're looking for everything you do to be the total athlete. So take some of these uh, notes here that uh, our experts have put out. Reach out to them. I would suggest uh, Dion and, and uh, Sergio, if you want to put your contact information and your websites onto our space right now, that would be fantastic. And, uh, of course, I'm going to get Sergio up on our, on our partner page and Dion also. So we'll try to continue to connect with these valuable partners and uh, encourage your friends. Be leaders of the good habits is what I'm hearing Dion say. Is It's not so much don't hang out with those friends, but be an influencer and be somebody that shows them, man, you know, if you eat this and it's, uh, you know, 86 grams of carbs and it's not good carbs, you know, how are you going to? how you're going to get by in the game and stuff like that. So make it a subject of conversation, especially when you're going to these camps and you've got to be in a tryout mode from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. And you got to look uh, great. In fact, when you go to these camps in, in Tulsa, especially in Colorado, I'll be at some of those. We actually do a prep, a prep meeting and then we actually have lunch together. So we're going to tell your parents to go get a healthy lunch before and we're going to sit and share and eat together and debrief and talk about the things we learned. So it's a good time to fellowship over good stuff and not necessarily uh, go to the, as Dion or, or Sergio called it, the Whataburger line. So that's a Texas thing for those of you who don't live down here. But uh, any other questions, anybody you can uh, chime in or our speakers have any final thoughts? This has been an amazing space. We do record it. We do put it up on our media page and um, at the very bottom of our website, you can link onto our previous podcast. You can connect with us that way too, but uh, share this space when we're done. Tell your friends what you learned and, uh, you know, keep adding value. Dion. Yeah, especially for the the athletes that are still in the thick of it. You say you're going to Tulsa. Um, I will actually be at some of the Texas events this summer. I'm really excited to be. But athletes, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and direct message me about what needs to be in your cooler. 
and how do you sustain that energy? I would love to have some um, conversation about that and give you some great ideas. Um, I'm definitely open to that information if you need it. Um, and I think it's very much, or even where to get it. I, I love finding great foods and um, ways that you can actually fuel your body throughout the day. Love it. And Sergio, any final thoughts or words of advice or anything you forgot? <laughs> uh well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I, I absolutely love uh, being a part of these kids' journey. It's 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 so fun for me to uh, to see these kids just blossom and really reach their goals. So it's 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 super fun. Um, uh, yeah, and I guess if if I was to give any advice to any of uh, the young ladies and parents here is to really focus on the process. Focus on the process of of your meals, your sleep, sleep is huge. It's, it's definitely underrated. Most people don't even think about that. That's whenever your, that's whenever your battery recharges, right? So, uh, sleep, get enough sleep, um, get off your social media at a decent time. Everybody's different. So I'm not going to be super strict about that, but losing sleep over social media, is not worth it. It's not what elite athletes do really focus on the process and the outcome will be exactly what you want. Fantastic. And all of you, don't forget, Jackie hosts a great uh, space on 530 Central Time tomorrow, Tuesday. She talks about everything. Some of her audience is here. Some of her contributors to that show are here talking about everything in softball. You want to know what you're getting into. Let's learn about the sport. Go see my TikToks on the portal, okay? The portal is starting. Coaches are being moving around i hate to say fired or let go but man it's happening the juicy of the juicy starts right now so uh get informed understand where you're going it all doesn't look the same just because it's a p5 and they got a pretty flag and you have friends you know that um you know think they can play there it's it's not what it all's meant uh to be or looks to be on the outside and that's why we do what we do so dr jackie bring us out all right. First off, thank you both uh, for joining us today. Dion, it's always good to hear from you. Sergio, it was awesome meeting you on here and just listening to what you have to offer because, you know, as I sort of said a little earlier, I wish somebody was reinforcing this and it was consistently in my ear uh, when I was younger because this is such an important lesson. Knowing how to prepare yourself mentally and physically is is extremely important, especially if you want longevity in your sport and you want to excel for a long time, not a short time. Um, so by being able to fuel your body, prepare your body, it allows you to be the best athlete and focus on other things rather than injury and attempting to get through other barriers. So overall, thank you so much to all, everyone in this space. Make sure you listen to this space again. Don't let this be the last time. Tomorrow morning, you're going to school on the bus. Listen back to it. All right. Let this sink in. This is one of the most important things uh, because it will be something that will change the fabric of yourself as an athlete. Um, it is what you're seeing on TV. All the major, whether it be Oklahoma, Sydney McKinney, anybody else, fast, everyone is doing these things. Um, and if you aspire to for that to be your goal, to be at that stage, then you must listen to this again. It is so important. And you all are going to be shocked. I actually know what our topic is going to be next Monday. I usually ponder on it for a couple of days, but it was suggested by one of our coaches uh, of some of these players that are on here. Uh, and I've already got a mental coach lined up who came on back in November, but I'd also welcome our um, um, guest speakers that are on here tonight because I think they can add to it too. But how do you get through the recruiting process when you get an injury in the middle of the process? We have several that are down with an injury, and I'm going to be happy to handle the, the recruiting part of the, the questions. But I, there's always a mindset. There's always an emotional thing that these athletes go through, and they feel their feelings when they're in it, and it's not a, a, a doomsday kind of thing, so we can solve it. But I would love to hear – some of the modified workouts along with the, the mental and, um, you know, like perspective and how do they get through it and how do they keep their heads on and not get down about themselves and, and not think that it's over. So I, I don't know the title of it, but stay tuned for it. I'll, I'll put it out in the morning. I think on Thursday, I'm going to confirm all, all the speakers and just make sure 
that we put it out there. But thank you all for joining in, especially because I couldn't get the original link to work. So you all came in organically and we appreciate your support. And man, it is time. It is season. We are all getting wrapped up and ready to go. So uh, drink some water before you go to bed, get some sleep tonight. And uh, like uh, Jackie said, listen to it again. Thank you all. Have a great evening. Good night.